Hi, and welcome to At Home Art Lessons with the Art Groupies. We're going to be working with this groupie today, Observant Owen. Observant Owen is like a little ant walking across a piece of artwork, noticing everything. We're going to be noticing some things about Henry Matisse's artwork. He is a famous artist and was known as the King of Color. He loved using organic and geometric shapes and he liked to create harmony with the colors that he used. So Henry Matisse, he's a famous impressionist artist. He was born in France in 1869 and he also was considered a fauve which is known as a wild beast in French because he painted with so many crazy colors because that's what it was all about, expression with color. We're going to be inspired by his painting Fishbowl. I'm sorry, Goldfish. We're not going to be just using Goldfish, but thanks to Deep Space Sparkle, we're going to make whatever type of fish we would like. And we're going to notice what kind of shapes would be used to create these beautiful fish. So break down anything with simple shapes and everything can be drawn. I'm going to focus on this big guy and I'm going to hold my paper vertically so I can have enough room and fill up the space. I'm going to first be using um, metallic crowns. These are um, something I've never used before. So Crayola came out with metallic FX crowns and there's some absolutely beautiful colors. So I'm going to start my fish by using the simple shape of an oval. And again, I'm holding my paper long ways. If I was going to do um, another type of fish, like maybe this angel fish, or the blue devil, I would probably hold it horizontally. But because he has such a huge long fin up here, I'm going to hold it vertically. And I'm going to just sketch lightly with my, with my crown. And I'm going to leave a lot of space up top here for that beautiful fin that he has up here. And I just want to make sure that I have all of the designs in here and enough space before I really start pressing hard and putting in beautiful designs so my color is just going to be a nice green for right now Lots of triangles for the fin here as, long, as well as the fin up here. I did a nice oval for his opened mouth. I did a, probably a start of a, a square here, I guess, and then added the triangle. So if you break things down into really simple shapes, anything can be made. So if you would think about this shape maybe with a rectangle and then attach it to that fish. So now that I basically have an idea of what my fish, um, the shape of my fish, I can then go ahead and maybe press a little harder so that fish really stands out. And tropical fish have such beautiful colors. So I'm going to go a little crazy. And again, I'm using Henry Matisse, who's the king of color. And I can color like a wild beast and use all these beautiful metallic colors in my art. Let's try another color, maybe for his, his eye here. A shape that comes up and around. shape down here around his mouth. Oop, just lost my light. Let's 
Sorry about that. Maybe some more designs down in here. The more designs you have on your fish, the more things you get to add color to, and the more exciting your artwork becomes. And you could probably paint your fish the way you're feeling right now, using those colors to express how you're feeling. So what color are you? What color are you feeling today? And how can you reflect that into your piece of art? Maybe put some cool designs in here. Again, the more designs you have, the more colors you can paint with. Don't have to make it look exactly the way the fish looks. You can have fun with this. If you're feeling happy, paint your fish with some beautiful happy colors. If you're feeling blue, paint your fish with some blue colors. It's totally up to you. But make this art about you. When Matisse was living in Nice, he loved the beautiful sunshine and he just was amazed at how that sunshine just changed his colors and the way he thought about his art. So he was happy, so he painted happy. Long live painting, he said to his friend Bernard when he wrote him a letter. So there you have it. My beautiful fish made with simple shapes and beautiful metallic crowns. Now the best part about using metallic crowns or oil pastels is that they'll resist the watercolor paint. So I'm going to use watercolor paints and before any artist starts you really want to scrub and clean that paintbrush. When you're using watercolor paints you just want to tickle the paint. You don't want to scrub because it's mostly about water and you can always add more paint over top. We're going to get started with using paint for this background and the technique that we're going to use is called wet into wet. So I'm first just going to wet my background. And you can do this several different ways when you apply the color. You can just take your color and just let it dip and spread into the water that you already placed. Or you can move your paintbrush around and watch it blend and create new colors. It kind of blends naturally when you do a wet into wet technique. And what also is cool, it just looks more natural and doesn't have that, that painted feel. And it's just so natural and beautiful. So this is a wet into wet technique. I only do a little area at a time because you kind of don't want that water to dry before you get to it because that's the only way a wet on wet technique works. And you kind of want to keep your palette nice and clean. Do the mixing on your paper. Make sure you wash your brush in between each color so you don't mess up those beautiful colors. Mixing can be done on the paper or you can even find a palette. See the difference? if I were just to paint versus painting with the wet on wet technique. So wet your paper first with some clean paper, paint, I'm sorry, clean water, and then add those 
spectacular blobs of color and let the water do the talking. You can always go over some areas to make things darker. So I'm going to come down here, add some more water. You don't want to get caught up in scrubbing either. You kind of just want to tickle. You want to tickle the paint. You want to tickle the paper. And it just makes a beautiful design. The crown also adds as a resist or a barrier between your background and your fish. Kind of keeps the, the color contained. You can always use this technique to make your fish as well. And then after you're done painting, when it's dry, go back in and add the, the lines and the details for your fish. So again, wet into wet is the technique. You wet the surface of the paper first, and then you add color. And remember, not so much paint, more water than color. You can always go in later or go back in over top of some of your color to make it deeper and richer. My background isn't really what's important. I would like my fish to be the important part. So that's why I kind of, you want, you want to keep the background rather watery. And if you use a little too much water and it starts to puddle up, not to worry. You can use a paper towel and you can sop some of that water up. And that also will create another type of technique and it will leave a little bit of a texture behind. That's always fun too. A lot of artists will use that technique for perhaps um, background for landscapes or even for, for some water. So I'm going to go ahead now and use some paint to paint my fish. I'm going to use brighter colors to really make that fish pop out from that background. And the crown will resist the paint because it's made of um, wax and water and wax don't really get along very well. And if you use just the right amount of water when you're painting, it will not cover up that crown. You can also use oil pastels. You'll get the same type of result. It's the same type of technique, oil instead of wax. So even if you paint over the crown, it still shouldn't cover it up if you've used enough water. If you don't use enough water, well, then it's not going to be able to resist that wax or the oil from the pastels. It'll definitely cover it up. So again, watercolors, it's just that. You want to use more water than color because it's the first word used watercolor. Completely different than, than tempera paint. Tempera paint is just thick and you don't need to um, use so much water. It's more about the color in the paint than
So have fun with your fish. Making him beautiful and colorful, like the king of color, Matisse. If you want things to stick out and be really contrast, have a big contrast against the background, then don't use so much water. And that color would really pop. Ooh, ooh, it's blending into my background. Used a little too much water. So we'll just suck that up with that paper towel and be on our way. So Henry Matisse, a famous Impressionist artist. I hope you had fun. Continue watercoloring and paint your fish. I can't wait to see when it's done. Thanks for joining me. Bye.